push the limit, push the limit, can't stun us. Howdy, partner. Well, howdy. Well, howdy, rootin' tootin'. Rootin' tootin', and, back uh, at you. Well, dude, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I don't even know what episode it is anymore. I it's think episode it's nine. nine. It's episode nine. Yeah. So, a lot of people obviously don't know this, because why would we tell you? Why? I made Connor... Promise me nine solid episodes of How Do You Like Your Coffee, and this is the ninth episode. I don't think we're going to retire yet unless we get an outstanding uh, negative boo. review. <laughs> yeah, if we get an outstanding boo from the crowd. But, but my contract is up here, yes. so it's time to re-up, and I want to raise. Give you guys another 90, <laughs> 90 episodes. That's a couple of years. Um, but that's like a year and a half. Anyway, uh, how's everybody doing? Welcome to episode nine of How Do You Like a Coffee with Connor and Kai. I'm Kai. This is Connor, as mm. always, unless we swap names or change seats, but we never do. No, why would we? <laughs> um, so, as always, going to start our podcast off with putting a pin in it. Uh, we got some Colombian bam bam for you guys here. And, straight uh, from Colombia. Straight from the hills and mountains. I don't know if Colombia has hills and mountains. I don't know either, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do. Anyways. My stepmom sent this little care package to me earlier this week um, with this nice Colombian coffee. It looks good. It's a great package. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's a good-looking package. Yeah, it looks organic. Yeah. Um, but she also sent me some homemade biscottis. Bis- wow, that was uh, French. Oh, well. <laughs> nope, that was – I don't know. I don't know what, what it was. Biscottis? But either way, we have homemade biscotti that we're going to try. She told me in a little note that we would like it to feature – she would like us to feature it on yes. this week's episode. So yep. here we are. So this mm-hmm. one's for you, Penny. Oh, yep. So, All right. I'm going to uh, dip it in first before I try the Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Biscottis are kind of messy. Yeah. So I don't know. Sorry I don't know table. how the crowd feels about biscottis. I like biscotti. I like the way they taste. I just think they're, they're hard. I haven't had a biscotti yeah. in a minute. Oh, neither have I. I don't like to eat on camera either, but here we are. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's that called? That YouTube? Is it ASMR? Yes. Mm. ASMR. Mm. I'm going to put that as a hashtag. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I'm not surprised. Yep. Really good. Mm-hmm. Shout out to my stepmom. Notes of uh, bisque mm-hmm. and some notes of Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys can't buy these biscottis because they are only for us. Well. And Penny made them. So, let unfortunately. Me, uh, let me plug her Instagram real quick. <laughs> she has. So, she set up a business out of our house back home. Oh, really? Yeah. Because she used to bake for bakeries back in, in La Jolla, down in San Diego. That's why these are good. Yeah, no, she's legit. Um, it's called Del Mar Seaside Kitchen. They live in Del Mar now. Um, mm. So it's just at Del Mar Seaside Kitchen. All one word, no caps, no spaces, no. I would definitely recommend this biscotti to everybody in the world. That's a pretty good review. Yeah. Damn. That's pretty good. Now that that's done, um, I guess we should try the coffee. It's just some, what, do we have a, I think it's like a medium roast. Yeah. What's the name on you? Caesar, it's spinning really it's hard to read while it's spinning. <laughs> um, I and I, I can't read anyway. So, <laughs> you know, when it spins that fast, I'm in trouble. Um, well, now that that's done, we got a lot going on. Yeah, the coffee's good. There's a lot of crumbs on the table, yeah. so sorry about All right. that. Well, Mila, I need some. <laughs> um, yeah, really uh, really good chocolate biscotti by Penny. Mm. Uh, coffee, Colombian Bam Bam. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be good, though. Uh, try it out if you don't like coffee. Well, that, You're, this yeah. is the wrong podcast for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of album reviews for you guys. Mm-hmm. We're taking it to uh, some roots reggae music this week. You know, reggae nation. Yeah, reggae nation. You know, some call it reggaeation. No one calls it that. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but the company I work for specializes in reggae. Um, a lot of the artists we manage are reggae bands. Um, you know, the festival I work for, Cali Roots, it's a reggae festival. Um, so I thought, you know, for episode nine, it's a special episode. It's my, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the end of the contract for me. Just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I won't let him leave. Um, so yeah, we decided to debut three tech, yeah, three different artists, uh, Bump and Uglies, Arise Roots, and Ayaterra. Mm-hmm. Um, Ayaterra is actually one of the bands, um, the company I work for, Ineffable Music Group. We manage them. Ineffable. That's how we say it. That's how we in, uh, introduce ourselves at every concert. Um wow. <laughs> But also on, so we're doing a single by Ayaterra, but also on that um, single is Stick Figure, which is I like a very, very big band now in the reggae industry. Yeah. Um, they actually had their first headlining Who, tour last year. Who's bigger, you think? Iration or Stick Figure? Stick Figure. Oh. Yeah. Iration's um, good, too. If you Iration is, I mean, they're popular. It's just Iration's been around longer. Yeah. Um, old news. Old news, yeah. Like but Green Stick Day. Figure is also one of the <laughs> artists we manage. <laughs> Shout out Green Day. 
Um, okay, so let's start off with um, Bump and Ugly's album, Keep Your Suitcase Packed. Um, if anybody knows Bump and Ugly's, um, we call them American reggae. People used to call mm -hmm. it white reggae, but mm -hmm. that became a racial issue. So yeah, we call it I'm American. pretty sure they all have dreads. Bump and Ugly's? Yeah. I don't think so. Oh. No, I'm fairly positive not all of them. I, thought, I just saw a picture. Maybe it was a... Uh, it was probably it was Ryan's Ryan's Roots. Oh, maybe it was Ayatera, actually. Um, anyway. Either way... Um, Bump and Uglies, uh, Keep Your Suitcase Packed. It's a new album that just dropped last week. Um, fairly slow album, but it's good music. You know, I mean, they, they have a, a very big beat. Bump and Uglies vibe. is kind of slow, though. But yeah, very beach vibe. I was actually thinking about this. You know, I was like, the cool thing about reggae is they sing about everything, mm. I feel like, you know. Whereas if you have, like, R&B, it's, like, slow, soft jams about, you know, a girl who – makes you hate yourself and you know what i'm saying is like every type of music has their own type of genre and like story that they tell and i feel like reggae like tells a story about a lot of things yeah i mean reggae has become such a big genre of music um from all different types of reggae there's roots reggae american reggae mm -hmm. um and i guess you could say new age reggae yeah. but um i mean regular you know not regular um excuse me roots reggae like original reggae mainly is music um obviously from Jamaica, um, but more so focused on politics, uh, culture, and um, wanting to create change. So Roots Reggae music is actually a very good thing to listen to, especially now yeah. um, during this time. It's really cool. You can but, listen to it everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so in Monterey, where they have Cali Roots Festival, it's on Monterey Fairgrounds mm -hmm. uh, every year in, in May. And uh, what's cool about the fairgrounds is next to a golf course, it is. And the golf course has the fairgrounds um, enclosed on itself with cross-link fence or chain-link fence. So you, it's like not blocked off. You can basically see Cali Roots while you're golfing, and you can listen to it, and it's loud, and it's kind of relaxing. I kind of like golfing <laughs> during Cali Roots Festival. Because Have you, you can, golfed during the, the yeah, festival? Yeah, oh, it's actually cool. it's pretty cool. That. Yeah, so you can like play all the holes, and you see everybody like mm -hmm. on stage singing, and you listen to the music and stuff for a solid four hours. A lot of people sneak in that way. Yeah, I believe it. I've done it. Shout oh. out. <laughs> Before I started working for them, I actually I, I snuck into Cali Roots. I don't know if that's something you say on camera, but that's okay. I mean, you know, you me. some come and get me. <laughs> um, but yeah, great album, nonetheless. Um, you know, like I said, slower. Bumpin' Uglies is usually like a slower band. I yep. hate the name of the band. Just I'm gonna put that out there. Bumpin', Bumpin Uglies. Uglies is just like, hey, what's up, man? What do you got planned? I'm just bumping some uglies. Yeah, that's just. Ugh. But, they should change it to Biscotti Uglies. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of this episode. Maybe mind. that should be Penny's Band. Ooh, um, that's kind of a cool name, Penny's Band. Penny's Band is a good name. But yeah, they, uh, <laughs> like I said, slower slower album, but they do have one song in there that kind of sp not spoke to me, but jumped out, and it's called Suburbia, and they mm -hmm. really focus on um, big pharma capitalizing on um, addiction, addicting drugs, and mm -hmm. getting these kids addicted to drugs. And um, that, you know, there, there, there's definitely a message there. But, I mean, the rest of the album I didn't really – have a, anything that spoke out to me message wise yeah it's, i feel like it's hard because reggae sounds like reggae yeah but it like it's hard to make it different and so the bands that can make it different are pretty talented because it's pretty difficult mm -hmm. i think so yeah i've listened to bumpa duckley since for a very long time they've been around for a while yeah um iration was around when i was in high school i believe yeah iration has been around for a good minute too yeah. um so the next album that we have for you guys is Arise Roots mm -hmm. Pathways. Uh, Pathways. Yep. They. Um, this is a. This is this band is more roots reggae. Um, it's got that gen not generic. Excuse me. Um, old school reggae feel. Reggae sound. Really fun to listen to. Arise Roots. They're a great band. Um, they actually when this album released, it was just a few days ago, or actually, yesterday. So, today is the twentieth. So yesterday on the nineteenth. Mm -hmm. But when you're listening to this, it's not the twentieth. It's whatever day is this three Wednesday. days from now yeah either way um when they released this album they did a huge live stream for it they performed the whole album live um it live streamed on the cali roots youtube on the cali roots facebook page and a few other venues that our company owns it um live streamed on their pages as well nice yeah it was really cool really cool way to debut an album especially now i've never heard of arise roots mm. they've been around for a long time too i don't know how long they've been around for but i mean they, they've definitely made a name for themselves mm. like they're a popular band they come to cali roots they come i was to gonna roots say uh, what was that i can't remember if it was arise roots or if it was outer space by uh ayatera mm -hmm. um one of them reminded me of a mix between reggae and bohemian rhapsody 
Oh, interesting. And it was like, not like the, here she go, here she go. Da, mm-hmm. Not that part, but yeah. like the beat of the background of Bohemian Rhapsody. It was like mm-hmm. an upbeat kind of reggae. Thing. That's funny. I was actually just watching that movie um, about Queen. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's called Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, um, <laughs> great album, and they have a few features on a few of the tracks. Um, Eric Rachmani from Revolution, the head sing, the lead singer of Revolution, is on their song "Come and Get It." He has an amazing voice and always brings a nice little um, type of way to each song he's on. Immediately, that made me think of "When You're Ready, Come and Get It." No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's and, not the same. And then they have Nat- <laughs> Natalie Rise on another track, and she is. Um, we consider her one of the queens of Cali Roots. She's very Roots Queen. reggae music, um, straight from Australia, and she just mm-hmm. has a, she has an amazing voice. But all in all, great, great Roots reggae music yeah. album. Um, it's pretty long. It's a little over an hour, mm. but highly suggested. It's called Pathways by Arise Roots. Mm. And the uh, next song we have to review for you guys today would be Outer Space by yep. Ayaterra and Stick Figure. That oh, one's like real slow pace. That one is real slow pace. Real slow pace. Good song, though. Um, you know, it has that existential vibe. Yeah. It's it. kind of tough, you know, when we do – and this, I guess it's for more of you. It's kind of tough when we do album reviews of albums that are fairly similar because when I listen to them, I have a hard time deciphering which one's which when I think about them. You know? Yeah. As we, just, we listen to so many songs yeah. before each episode yeah. of the podcast. and they Hundreds and thousands of well, songs. Yeah, hundreds, that's for sure, but – not thousands, yeah. not yet at least. We we legit listened to thirty songs today, uh-huh. and have to like think about which ones are which. And all and, the time, and reggae does tend to it meshes. It yeah. meshes, yeah, absolutely. You can easily listen to a reggae album and like it could switch songs and you not know. That's true. That actually happened to me when I was listening <laughs> to the Arise Roots. I was like, wait, what song is this? Um, but anyways, Ayatara and Stick Figure are both artists. Um, Ineffable Music manages, which is really cool because Ayatara is fairly big. Um, but stick figure is just getting bigger and bigger by the mm-hmm. month. Like they are just, like I said, they had their first headlining tour, I believe last year, 2019, they sold out, um, the Red Rock stadium, which is like 9,000 tickets. That's in Arizona, Nevada, uh, Colorado, Colorado. One yeah. of those, one of the four that are. Yeah. Changing. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> that's 9,000 tickets. They sold it out. I think like two or three nights in a row, Damn. which is, pff, yeah, that's crazy. That's pretty, that's pretty big. Um, and they were going to, they headlined Cali roots for the first time in 2019. And that was like nice. their big headline moment of last year yeah yeah so it's cool you know it's cool to see these bands grow and stuff it's cool to be a part of a company that you know is managing um these artists but yeah those are the sweet yeah check them out guys uh if you like reggae Mm -hmm. you guys are gonna love these because they are reggae if you don't like reggae well yeah listen (laughs) exactly listen to it because reggae is actually it's kind of cool it depends everybody i'm not gonna lie everybody has a mood Mm -hmm. in their repertoire uh-huh. of like moods right when you're angry or sad or like chilling and vibing like everybody it doesn't even matter who you are people who hate reggae i guarantee you have a reggae mood always. sometime in their life reggae moods always for me is on the beach like i don't think i could listen to like young thug or gunna on the beach that's just too much <clears throat> unless i was at like a big party yeah but like just the other day i mean it was really nice weather in monterey and i was out on the beach with some friends and mm-hmm. threw on a little reggae spotify playlist and it Kept the crowd entertained, you know, the crowd of I love people it. I was with. So You're a party animal. I am. <laughs> it's hard to, can't keep me down. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, on to the next. Oh. So, so ooh, music Coffee. industry news. Yep, yep. Let's start with Spotify. I love it. I love Spotify. That's where we're at. Spotify. Like and subscribe. Has so many different options. They do. I can listen to literally a new song Every single day for the rest of my life and probably never listen to all the songs on Spotify. That's very true. There's a lot of music out there in the world. Um, but this is not about music, Kyler. This is about podcasts. I love it. It's we what we are, do. Yep. We are the podcast gurus. We That's are. what they call us, at least at this table. Yeah. Our, uh, the Spotify <laughs> board actually calls us the podcast yes. aficionados. We actually have a five-member board that runs this podcast. Mm-hmm. And three of those people are Connor and then I'm the other two people. Oh. And that's what we call ourselves is the podcast. So I have the majority. Yep. So what's, a lot of changes are coming, people. <laughs> what's hip hop happening in the podcast bonanza? So we learned a few weeks ago that Spotify made an exclusive deal with the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Mm. Um, you know what I found out is it doesn't start until September. I think we mentioned that in the other episode. Oh, well, yeah. I heard it the other day. I was like, huh, that's yeah. crazy. September 1st. Um, but this is not about Joe Rogan. This is about other podcasts. Um, we'll start with uh, Spotify working with Warner Brothers Studio. Um, they are going to have scripted 
DC Comic Universe podcast. So you'll be listening to podcasts spoken by Batman, Superman. Do you think and, that it's podcasts about like normal stuff, or do you think it's like legit Batman in a duel and he's like kachu pow? I don't really know yet, but I would love to hear those sound effects. Yeah. I'd love to hear you do all the sound effects for the <laughs> episodes. Um, but that's, I mean, that's kind of a big deal. You know, like Spotify is definitely, you know, they were definitely putting their toe in the pool of podcasts. Now they're just diving in head first. Yeah. Um, you know, working with Warner Bros. That's a huge studio. And now they're taking on the DC universe, which is a very big universe. Yeah, that's huge. Are um, you a DC or Marvel? Dude, I'm not, not either. Care? Like, I was going to say that, like, I'm not really, a, I'm not a big superhero guy. I didn't really watch a lot of those when I was younger. Um, there's a really cute picture of me when I was like three years old in a Superman costume for Halloween. That's so cute. But other, yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I haven't really been big on it. Like I haven't watched much of the you know other superhero movies. I feel like they came out with like five a year for the past yeah, three years. I'm not gonna came. lie, I have watched all of them. Did you really? Yeah. Are you but, big fans of that? Yeah, but do you want to know what my like deepest darkest secret is? Is that I can never remember who's DC and who's Marvel. Marvel, sorry. I think but, that's going to cause – you should not go to Comic-Con. You'll yeah, get, you'll I, get I can never figure it out. And, like, people will be like, oh, do you like DC or Marvel? I'm like, dude, Thor is sick. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, You yeah. wouldn't like Thor, bro. That's kind of cool, though. So podcasts of DC characters. Yeah, it's scripted, too, which is unlike us. We're not scripted. We just have topics that we're going to talk about. We free range it. We, we wing, wing it. it. We sling it. Okay. And we bada wada bring it. And we bang bang it. it. You don't use it. Google here. Yeah. Um. But so yeah, DC Universe comics are coming soon to Spotify. Also, you know her, you love her. Nope. Kim Kardashian West has her own podcast that's going to be exclusively on Spotify coming soon. I can picture her voice in my head right now, talking to the people, and then me turning it off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to know what kind of podcast it's going to be? It's a crime podcast. I don't think she has any qualifications to be speaking on crime podcasts i think she's just gonna be she's just gonna be reading old cold cases and then give her two cents on how to figure it out huh. maybe Dude. she'll solve some cases man. yeah you know what everybody loves apparently is like the greatest thing on spotify that i don't really think anything about what's that is crime junkies you don't you don't like those no i have never listened to them but i know uh, everybody loves them yeah everybody does my my coworker um brandolin loves them man she'll listen to them uh in the office and sometimes her and i She'll put it on speaker and we'll listen. And some of them are pretty intense. They're fun to listen to. They get you kind of creeped out. Yeah. Um, That's what I hear. I haven't listened to any. But I need to. I'm going to do that now. Well, you can listen to Kim Kardashian. She'll, nope. <laughs> she'll have her own crime podcast. Um, like I said, coming soon. I don't think there's an official date for it yet. But it just blows my mind that she is getting her. No. What's going to happen is she's going to be doing a podcast in like her own private room. Mm -hmm. And then Courtney and Chloe are going to storm in and be like, who stole my purse? And then it's going to be like a whole like girl sister it's just, fight. It's going to be more yeah. of like keeping up with the Kardashians podcast. <laughs> um, but with all of this news, Spotify stocks, we talked about stocks last week, um, has hit an all time high. Um, I know we mentioned uh, when we mentioned Spotify took over the Joe Rogan podcast, their stock value went way up and it just keeps going up. It went mm -hmm. up 13%. After this news hit, That's pretty good. Um, do you know what it's at now? It topped out at two hundred and thirty dollars per share. Gee, and That's just earlier this month, it was at one hundred and fifty. That's pretty good. That's pretty so damn good. Double. And uh, at the beginning of COVID, it was at a hundred and like five dollars. Um, so it doubled over the past three months. That's pretty good. Even more than doubled, which is insane. So lucky for you, Spotcat, Spotify. Stockholders, yeah, we all made some money in the past three months. Not That's a crazy. bad uh, hey, dude. As I was like, I was talking to my parents about this, right? So, Amazon, if a lot of you know, is at $2,600 a share right it's now, insane. if yeah. not more. Yeah, in 1997, it was two dollars and 70 cents a share. I looked at my parents, I was like, Parents, why did you not invest in Amazon? And they were like, Who's Amazon? And that's what they were trying to get at is like in the 70s like when who? Amazon was $2.70. Nobody cared about Amazon. My dad actually told me when Amazon first started, you know, everyone thinks Amazon was just books and stuff back in the day. Well, they actually started out, according to him, I believe, if I remember this correctly, they started out selling mainly computer books, mm. um, like geeky-esque type yeah. stuff. Because you know, that was like the era books. of the Mac Mm -hmm. Like the Macintosh. Yeah, that's when all the stuff was becoming big. So yeah. people wanted books on, you know, about computers and stuff. So that's what they technically started out of, started out as mm -hmm. in his garage. 
he did this all out of his garage and everything cool they all do out. yeah right all the millionaires start in a garage well we, we might start doing this podcast in a garage i know we have to buy a garage because <laughs> i don't have a garage we could buy a garage and put it in here just to do the podcast you're gonna put a garage in your apartment yeah we can just put like a garage door right here and then lift it up before every show that'd be a cool opening that would actually be pretty cool um so kim k yeah kim k on spotify and oh we were talking about spotify stocks yeah spotify stocks topped out at two hundred and thirty dollars per share, thirty dollars. Yeah, and they, like I said, doubled in the past three months. More than doubled in the past three. Yeah. Months. So to so to talk on that a little bit for people who are unaware of how it works, which I'm sure you do. That's yours. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, so if you buy a share, let's say at a dollar, right, and then that share goes up to two dollars, you double your money, right? So that's clear. That's like that's given. But what I think a lot of po- people don't think about is after it starts to go higher and higher, it's almost exponential. Mm-hmm. Like people think you just like gain a little bit at a time and it's just like an even, no, it's not even like once you break, I would say once you triple your money in stocks, it just mm-hmm. keeps going up exponentially and it could literally jump to like a hundred thousand dollars the next day. And that's what, that's what's kind of cool. Stocks are cool to me. Mm-hmm. Stocks are cool because I like to be the stock reader and like guess the volatility of the next day mm-hmm. based on trends that I see. And so I will look through 20 stocks a day, be like, okay, last week, this one went up on Monday and then went up on Tuesday and then dropped on Wednesday and things like that. A lot of people think that you can't do that. I personally think you can if you know what you're looking at and if you care enough to like be invested for hours on end. That's true. It does take you know? time to read stuff like that. Well, it takes time not to read it, but it takes time to like analyze it. Yeah. Right. Because you can look at it and be like, oh, it went up today. It's probably going to go up tomorrow. Bye. But that's not the case at all. Stocks are so like misleading and it sucks. <laughs> but stocks are cool if you guys stay invested. I saw a statistic that said if you try and plan the stock market, like try and plan your stocks according to it, you lose like almost twice as much as if you would have just kept it in and like rode the wave. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what I've learned is to ride, like you said, ride the wave, you know, invest in something and just keep it there. Mm-hmm. And then it will, even if it goes down, it's supposed to increase supposed to go back all up. the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's cool. That's the fun thing about the stock market, man. It's an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. So um, Spotify stocks, what's next on here? So what's next this is a little bit more fun to talk about. Um, two chains rapper. Two chains. Exactly. Um, <laughs> is being sued. By Pablo Escobar's family. Yeah. Do you want to know why? A, I would probably just pay him because I don't want to die. Yeah. So. No, it's, I wouldn't want to mess around <laughs> with the, one of the biggest cartels. Um, he is being sued by Robert Escobar, which is Pablo Escobar's brother who is who was the accountant for the cartel, mm-hmm. um, for using the Pablo Escobar's image and likeliness for 2 Chains restaurant. 2 Chains owns two restaurants called Escobar and Tapas. Oh, is he a chef? Uh, you know, he has a chef show, actually. It's about getting high and making food, uh, something like that. Um, so yeah, it's has, called Escobar and Tapas? Yeah, and okay. then he has one in the South called Escobar and Tapas South. So he may Clever. have been high when he made these names. Yeah. Either way, you know, obviously he's been using Pablo Escobar's name. He has pictures of Pablo Escobar on the menus and around the restaurant um, and just has the theme of Pablo Escobar. So Robert Escobar is suing him and the restaurant for $10 million. How much is two chains worth? Like, is ten million chump change to him? You know, I don't know, and that scares me. That ten million dollars is chump change to certain people. Yeah, I'd be stoked if I even made that in my lifetime. Yeah. I mean, like, if he's like worth fifty million, right? I mean, ten million. That's I'm kind sure of he's a... worth more than that. Yeah. Um, but I know Pablo Escobar now. If he was alive, so when he died, whenever that was, he was worth thirty five billion. Um, but now in twenty twenty, that thirty five billion um, is worth fifty three billion. <laughs> Now that's jump change to yeah, the Escobar man, family. That's crazy. So I don't even know why they're suing him. Yeah, for $10 why would you sue for ten million? I would just be like, keep it and just like, I don't know, give him a cool mustache or something on your menu. You know, maybe I yeah. don't know. That's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, know, so <laughs> that's that's pretty funny um, to me. I think you know, like I'd be a little freaked out if I was two chains right now and the Escobar family was coming after me for two ten chains. million. Yeah, you can yeah. just yell two chains at the Escobar family. They're not gonna. They're like, oh, who, the <laughs> who is two chains? <laughs> like, yeah, they'll be like, what you got on this? Yeah, so. If you guys ever, so if you, maybe they'll close down these restaurants. I don't know what's going to happen during this lawsuit. Um, but if you have the time, hit up Escobar and Tapas. I'm sure they've got some good food. Two and do it before that, they blow up because. Like literally? Yeah, like, like no, like legit. <laughs> like just do it. Just little, go quick. Go before it's too late. Have a little car bomb. Yeah, your, that's uh, crazy. Tapas. And what's so crazy to me, I, I love, I, I'm not going to say I love the Pablo Escobar story. I think it is a 
interesting story. It is an interesting story. Yeah, the fact that he was like so known to be so horrible, not as a person, because I actually don't, well, maybe as a person. I mean, he ran a cartel that kills a lot of people. Yeah, but, you know, like to be known to do stuff like that and be able to just to live your life. Yeah. No one wants to touch him. Yeah. Um, That's nuts to me. There's actually a funny meme about Pablo Escobar and his son taking a photo with each other outside of the White House when he was one of the most wanted men in the world. That's funny. I was like, damn, dude, that's, yeah, bold, that's bro. Bold, just went honestly. straight to the Capitol. <laughs> so I'm just like, it doesn't even quick. matter. Yeah. I think, he was, I think he was smart, too. Yeah. I mean, I mean like, he got away with a lot. And I don't think rich, an idiot so. can run a cartel that big and, you know, profit that much. Yeah. $53 billion? That's insane. I always wonder about things like that is when you have a cartel and you have that many people that you're, like, overseeing Mm -hmm. and you're one person Mm -hmm. why does the cartel not attack you because they could like just group up and be like nah he's out you know i'm sure he probably kept his people pretty happy yeah i guess that's a trick and some of the towns um where the cartel were stationed loved the cartel because they kept the town safe and safe in quotes like a cartel robin hood look exactly is exactly i mean that's that's what a lot of those cartels down in mexico do is they you know they um advertise themselves as kind of the robin hood esque type character um yeah that's interesting and yeah interesting story yeah interesting story two chains i feel for you bro that's got to be pretty scary to get a letter from robert escobar saying man i just give him the money you know if i would just do it or just close down the restaurant yeah or that that's also a good and apologize or you're gonna end up with like a horse's head in your bed like the godfather oh you could do something cool and call it like esco burritos or something Mm. That'd be yeah. like a Mexican twist with burritos on it. That's cool. I don't know. Anyway, you know, in your best interest, just figure it out because, you know. I'm sure 2 Chains is listening to this, though. <laughs> well, um, that's what I got for you guys today. Yeah. So, uh, Kyler, hit him with some knowledge. Let's take it back one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, we got a little bit of something, something for you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. None of these stories are, like, super, super crazy, but they're all interesting in their own way. Um, Send the bar high. <laughs> Elon Musk postponed his uh, annual shareholders meeting that he's supposed to have on July 7th. Huh, why? Because you're only allowed to have so many people there at once, which is funny because remember you said that he opened up his Tesla factory and everybody got sick. Yep. And he like didn't care, yep. but now he obviously must have gotten in trouble and like learned his lesson and was like, well, we can't do that. So Interesting. Yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. He's not even going to do it over Zoom? No, I think he's just not do. He's postponing it to a later date so everybody can meet. But I guess that's interesting. I don't know if that'd be legal or not. Yeah, I feel like that could be contact. I don't know if that could be technically misleading the shareholder type thing. Yeah, but I don't really even know what they talk about at these shareholder meetings. I guess they just give you an update on the company and what their projected numbers are and things like that. But. Uh, also speaking on Elon Musk, when I was doing my research on two chains and the Escobar family, Robert Escobar is actually trying to sue Elon Musk for something he said. At a earlier date, I don't know if it was this year or last, but yeah, the Escobar family came after Elon Musk hmm. for X amount of money or a bunch of Tesla stock, and then Elon Musk just said no, hmm. which I'm like, that's pretty baller too. Yeah, that's pretty baller. <laughs> um, another story with some cool science stuff. So at the University of Cambridge, mm. which I believe is in the UK. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, they're doing some research. I found the story on National Science Foundation. They're doing some research where they take stem cells and they make – baby embryos to use as a model so that they can study like the growing process of babies in the embryonic stage. Are these human babies? Yeah, I think, I believe it will actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say it didn't classify any type of breed. It just said baby embryos. It just said baby embryos, which is scary to me because, you know, you see all these movies from back in the day, like Gattaca. Uh Uh, Are you familiar with Gattaca? I'm familiar. Yeah, so it's like the guy's trying to, you know, change his DNA so that – or like he basically has somebody who can't be an astronaut. He wants to be an astronaut, figures out a way so that he makes everyone believe that he's this other guy, and he eventually almost gets to space. But what's crazy to me is all those movies are so old, and it's like kind of possible like oh. now. Like to make baby embryos, you could literally grow a baby. And we talk That's about this. Cool. Yeah. We can talk like we talk about this in our bioethics classes and things like that. And it's like, is it biologically ethical to be able to allow somebody to pick how their baby is? Like, imagine Hmm. 20 years from now, you're like, you know what? I'm ugly. (laughs) I want my baby to not be ugly. 
I don't have muscles. I want my baby to have muscles. And so you like pick, okay, blonde hair, blue eyes, muscular, tan, tall. It's like, how crazy is that? That's crazy. That doesn't sound very ethical to me. Yeah. It's like you just get to pick and choose. Like, what about all the natural people? Then it starts this whole organic versus not organic baby boom. Oof. I don't know if I like that. That's yeah. Like, it's like, oof. imagine trying to play sports and everybody is better than you, all because your parents wanted you to be organic. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's now pretty I'm crazy. Pwned by some six six two hundred pound <laughs> fifteen year old. Yeah, in like soccer, and he's like running faster than everybody, and it's mm. like he shouldn't for, because he's seven feet tall. Some and, bionic baby. Yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Well, we'll see in the next twenty years what happens with that. Yeah, that may make sports a little bit more interesting. Though. Yeah, I that's get down with that. That's pretty nuts with me. What if they start growing babies just to play sports? Dude, they would like, legit have to raise the basketball hoop. Yeah, and this will make NFL stars, like, the whole talk uh, about, like, NFL stars getting hit too hard and, like, hurting themselves from their yeah. brands. You know, it's like, well, we could just grow babies just to do that and then, you know, just toss them out yeah, when they're done. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy to me. That's not ethical. But, but that's it's just – it's crazy that they have this science where they can take stem cells and make embryos so that they can study the early phases of embryonic uh, stage development in babies. And I immediately thought of, like, okay, in 30 years from now, we're going to have bionic babies in this mm. nuts. Um, so that's cool. Look into that if you care. Um, baby. <laughs> uh, another story, not as exciting, but still interesting. Uh, researchers in Antarctica found the world's second largest dinosaur egg. It's like the size of a scale. car? No, it's the size of a football. It's a deflated football. And they estimated that the reptile, lizard, marine mammal was about 25 feet long when it was Jeez, full grown that's a big animal yeah so i mean we're talking an egg like this big right it's it's like a football imagine pooping that out <laughs> gotcha. is that how babies are made i don't anyway. know you're the bio major <laughs> uh, so yeah so that's pretty cool and uh, so i was trying to give a reference and so immediately i thought of you know the blue whale how big is a blue whale pretty big. yeah it's like 100 feet on average 100 Ooh. feet long and it's like that's you know 25 feet dinosaur lizard baby it's not even that impressive when you think about a blue whale. But Man, we got bigger animals now. Yeah, blue exactly, whale. right? Yeah, and so that was kind of cool. Did, but. did they kind of give you an idea of what the animal looked like? Did they know what kind no, of they said, it was? No, they thought it was like a lizard-based marine mammal. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. So like a crocodile that is like a shark, like a shark crocodile. That sounds terrifying. Yeah. Um, not to try to put you on the spot, but do you know what is the biggest uh, dinosaur egg that has been found? You said this is the second largest recorded in history. Do you know what the first is? I do not, but I know that it is probably similar. I would imagine it's similar. I want to look it up because we have our computers in yes. front of us. So let's get on to the next. Yeah. Um, so the last final topic, which I think is actually very interesting for people who believe in the parallel universe and uh, are crazy. Um, and not crazy, actually, because I like this story. Um, so astronomers call this the hot carino and a hot carino is when you are looking into space mm. and you see a galaxy and you see stars in those galaxies spinning and it has chemicals that are bio uh biological chemicals that can support life and so what's going on is it's like a new planet is forming which we've talked about in the past but this is really cool because it's basically all of the components of making a new planet are just like sitting spinning in like a dust cloud whoa yeah so they found this and they were trying to um figure out you know what components were sitting there but the way that they determine what is floating in space based on like being from earth is they um pick up the radio frequencies of the like wavelengths that these chemicals are spitting out uh -huh. and so they thought that okay, we were not able to pick it up because all the dust spinning around this planet is blocking all the wavelengths. So they tried to pick up a longer wavelength and they, they were able to find, you know, all these biochemical components that are just floating around up there, which doesn't sound that exciting if you don't care about science. What does sound exciting is that it basically has all the components to make a new planet. Whoa. Yeah. And then like supports life. So basically our planet that started with us making this podcast and sitting here drinking coffee and biscottis, <laughs> that started – with this with the hot carino with the hot carino so that's the big bang is the hot carino no the big bang is oh, well, what caused the hot carino got it all right yeah oh, damn so it's cool though so that's pretty cool so basically what we're seeing is the very very early development stages of a planet that might be able to support human life yeah or so life in general. imagine like this coffee bag you take all the coffee grounds uh -huh. and you just throw it into the air and it starts spinning 
and it starts spinning, and then at the end of it, it makes a cup of coffee on its own. That's Ooh. what's happening in space. Oh, yeah, pretty cool. How do you like your planets? Yeah, <laughs> nice. Spinning. So the first one they found was actually in 2003, which is kind of interesting. But um, dang, man, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's actually. I think it's actually pretty cool, and it like it's. I feel like talking about this kind of stuff is hard for people to care about because they can't envision it. It is hard. To like it takes creativity. I'm not gonna lie, and imagination. But it's like kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's all I have for you guys. I mean, Connor, if you want to go ahead and well rattle off some, I'll rattle off a little something. So largest I, dinosaur egg discovered is yeah. So I found what the first largest dinosaur egg is. It was discovered in 1990 uh, in China, and it was two feet long and around 20 centimeters in diameter. Um, that's a puppy. That is a puppy. Yes, sir. Uh huh. And what kind? Uh, well, it's a dinosaur. I mean, it, I mean, yeah, it's a dinosaur. I mean, a velociraptor. <laughs> um, well, Wi-Fi is slow. Oh, this is a really long article. Anyway, that. so now you guys know. You know, largest dinosaur egg was about two feet long, found in China. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, you they know, science is cool. Them. Stay in school. Remain cool. Jump in the pool. And jump in the pool because it's hot. It's and I'm hot, actually going to turn on the AC right now. But take it easy, fellas and ladies. Uh, enjoy this podcast, episode nine. You know, good little rattle off for you guys. Next week, hopefully, we'll have another interview for you guys. Get you guys on some new music, new yep. upcoming artists, and yep. uh, I'm looking forward to it. We have a couple things in the works, and uh, yeah, I think we're talking about merch a little bit. I'm gonna make us some uh, Ooh, podcast merch, but that's uh, true. We have been talking about how do you like yeah, your coffee merch. We have some cool stuff in the works right now. Uh, we're gonna show and tell it on here with us and our, you know bodies <laughs> i was i was gonna say yep anyway um, um yeah so that's cool so stay tuned for episode 10 next week and the, actually episode 10 comes out on july 1st so uh yeah and connor's not retiring i won't let him so uh, stay tuned with us people music lives forever never stop it stop it yeah. one and done no we push the limit push the limit can't stun us